Hey, do you need some help setting goals and figuring out a plan to make this year your best year yet? Listen, I've got you. Go to christywright.com slash goals to download my free goal setting guide. I'm going to ask you a few simple but powerful questions that are going to help you know what's going on right now so you can set goals that are right right now. Go to christywright.com slash goals to get your free goal setting guide today. Go to christywright.com slash goals today. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Get Your Hopes Up. I'm Christy Wright, and I'm so glad you're here. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is the God of hope, and He wants you to overflow with hope. So let's start our week by getting our hopes up again. Now, today we're talking about walking by faith. This is something that is really nice in theory, and we know the scripture says we are to walk by faith and not by sight, but the reality is hard, y'all. It's really hard. I've gone through different seasons in my life where God asked different things of me, but I can tell you the last couple years have been a season of walking by faith in the most literal sense. So I guess it started when God asked me to leave Ramsey and asked me to leave behind everything I'd ever known for 12 years all of my work, my relationships, my books, my events, my coaching, my products, my services, my brand, my friendships, my income, my health insurance, all of my plans were deeply ingrained in this place. And it was good and it was right at that time. And when God asked me to leave, he truly asked me to walk by faith because I didn't know where I was going. I've talked about this before on this show. He asked me to leave everything and didn't tell me where I was going. It was very much this Abraham type of call. If you're familiar with Genesis, where God called Abraham to leave everything and go to a land he had never seen before, go to a land where he didn't know where it was or what was going to happen there. And during the season of God asking me to leave Ramsey and me walking that out, God kept reminding me of Abraham, leave everything and you will go to the place I will show you. So that's the first major moment where God asked me to walk by faith, where you're truly walking and you have no idea what the next step is. You don't know where you're going. You don't know how you're going to get there. I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. I didn't know very practical answers to very practical needs that I had. And I also didn't have any comforts that I was used to of the security of the friendships and the plans and the events and the things that I'd built my whole life on. It was very literally walking by faith. And what I didn't know at that time was that was going to be the first of many instances where the Lord was going to ask me to walk by faith. And not even so much ask me, y'all, as much as force me. He forced me to walk by faith. I wanted answers and he gave me none. I wanted provision. He didn't give it at the time. I wanted to know what the next step was, maybe three steps ahead. He wouldn't tell me. I wanted to know what I was going to be doing next month or even next week. He wouldn't tell me. I went into this season of two years of walking by faith, where time after time after time, God did not give me what I asked for. He didn't give me the answers I needed. He didn't give me the direction I needed, the clarity I needed. I was begging him. I was praying. I was fasting. I did everything I knew to do to ask him for the answers and direction that I needed, and he just didn't give it. And to be honest, it started to feel like he was really holding out on me. Like, I don't know, y'all, when I go through this really difficult season where I'm very obedient and I pass the test and I do the hard thing he's asked me to do, whatever that is, I just expect some type of reward. Have you ever felt like that? Like God asked you to obey in something really, really hard and you do, you kind of expect to get, I don't know, a round of applause, a pat on the back, a high five, a well done. And more often than not, you get the opposite. He pulls you into deeper difficulty, into deeper wilderness, into deeper testing most of the time. And that was certainly my case. So I leave Ramsey. I do this really hard thing. And instead of giving me a round of applause or a standing ovation, God just tests me further and further and further. And I ask for answers and he doesn't give them. And I ask for provision and he doesn't give it in the way that I expect or need. And it just seems like he's holding out again and again and again. I asked God to provide for something, and instead, he would often ask me to give more. I asked for cushion, 
and margin, and God would give me just enough for that day. I would ask for security and comfort, and instead, God just gave me himself. After months and months of this, one day I cried out to God. I remember the exact moment because I was going down this hill over here in Brentwood, about a mile from my house. And as I'm driving down the road, reflecting on how many times I have asked God to give me something that I needed and wanted to plan ahead and to prepare, and he just didn't give it to me. One day I finally cried out and said, God, I just want to be comfortable. I just want to be comfortable. And I felt the most gentle but firm whisper in my spirit say this. What if I don't want you to be? Ouch, y'all. Do you feel that? What if God doesn't want us to be comfortable? What if the very things that we want are not what God wants for us? See, that's the problem. The problem is that we don't want what God wants for us, really. If we're honest, We say we do and we think we do and we want to want to, but in our nature, we really don't. We really don't want what God wants for us at our core. If it were up to me, I would be completely independent of God, not dependent upon Him. Y'all, dependency sucks. Vulnerability sucks. Having to ask and wait and hope and pray sucks. It's hard. It's not fun. Everything in my nature, in my sin, in my flesh, in my Enneagram eightness, wants to have everything and control everything and not need anyone, not even God. If it were up to me, I would have a massive savings account. So no matter what went wrong, I could handle it. Money can fix most problems and I would just handle it. If it were up to me, I would have my life planned out way in advance so I would know exactly what's coming next and what to expect so I could be ready for it. See, when the Bible talks about the flesh versus the spirit, it's very literal. You are daily having to choose to walk by the Spirit, not by flesh. What our flesh wants is usually opposite from what God wants. Now, I'm not against a big financial cushion or savings account or planning ahead. But there are times that God will take away things you depend on to remove them from being an idol in your life. An idol you didn't realize you had until it was gone and you started having panic attacks and freaking out. See, you didn't know how badly you depended on that thing until it was gone. And then suddenly you feel so vulnerable, you feel like you're naked in public. Y'all, anything we depend on more than God is an idol. It's an idol. Whether that is comfort or security or money or plans, whatever it is. If we depend on it more than God, it's an idol. So in the last few years, God has been removing idols from our lives. Jobs, relationships, money, security. He is stripping them away to take back his rightful place as our God and the only one deserving of our worship and dependence and sense of security. He is our provider, nothing else. Now we know that in theory, but when we have to live that out in real life by walking by faith, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard. You know, I remember my pastor, Darren Whitehead, here at my church in Nashville, tell a story about being called to leave everything. I believe he was in Chicago at the time. And he tells the story of being in a community group or a men's discussion. They were all talking about things they were wrestling with or working through or what God was teaching them and leading them through. And he was talking about how he felt the call to leave everything, his church, his security, his income, everything, and move away and plant a church in Nashville. And he was really wrestling through this decision. He was really struggling with this decision of knowing what to do. And I I remember him telling the story of a man next to him asking him the question, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What is the wrestle? What, what What is the struggle here? What are you afraid of? And Darren said, he snapped back at him and he said, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to provide for my family. That's what. And the man very calmly replied, oh, do you think that you're the one that provides for them now? Y'all, that story hit me so deep when I heard it because it was right at the time that I was leaving Ramsey. And I remember feeling those very real fears. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to work? How is this going to work? What about my son's therapies? What about my son's school? What about the doctor's bills that we have to pay? What about all these very real, tangible, practical needs that we have in our life? How am I going to take care of this? And as Darren told this story, 
And he said the line, the man said to him, oh, do you think you're the one that provides for them now? It just clicked. I want to ask you that. Do you think you're the one that provides for your needs now? See, we think we do this ourselves. We get on our high horse and we think we produce the fruit in our lives. We pray prayers, we pray prayers of thankfulness, and we give God credit. And and we really believe that we credit God with the fruit in our lives. We believe that we do until God asks us to give up everything, walk away from everything, make the choice that is completely counterintuitive, completely illogical, to give when you have a need, to walk away from something that's good, to give up a stable paycheck. When God asks you to do the crazy, illogical, impractical, terrifying thing, then that's where the rubber meets the road. And we have to ask ourselves, do we really believe that God is our provider? Because if God was my provider at Ramsey, God's still the same God. He's going to be my provider post Ramsey. And the same is true for you. If God is your provider, if God is your comforter, if God is your security, then God can take away your income. He can take away your comforts. He can take away your security. And you still have the source because it's Him. See, there's a, there's a massive disconnect between what we know in our head and what we live out in our lives. What God is teaching us is the very thing he taught the Israelites in the wilderness. He is our provider. He is. He is. No one else. Nothing else. You know, a few months ago, I felt myself transitioning out of that wilderness season. I feel like the Lord was very clear that that season was up. The testing was over. And I was going into a new season, a season that I believe is favor and blessing and fruit and harvest for all the seeds I'd planted for two years, maybe even longer than that. But during this time of transition, which would have been right around December, I felt the tension of being in the in-between. I wasn't in the wilderness anymore, but I wasn't yet in the new season of fruit and harvest, and things were still tight. It was still a daily walk, a daily trust, a daily walking by faith and depending on the Lord for my every need. And to be honest, I was frustrated because I knew I wasn't in the wilderness anymore, but I still didn't have all the cushion and security and comfort and margin that I wanted and that I believed was coming. And then God reminded me of the Israelites. He fed them in the wilderness by manna, just enough for each day. I was still in the manna season. I was still getting fed daily. See, when the Israelites made it into their promised land, then they began to live on the land. The manna stopped, then they began to live on the land and their crops and their harvest from their work and their farming and so on. But in the wilderness, they lived on manna. They were only to collect enough for each day. There was a trust and a testing and a dependency in that to know I'm only gonna collect enough for each day because tomorrow there will be more. Tomorrow, my Lord will provide. Tomorrow, my God will provide again. There was only enough for each day. Many of you have been in a manna season. The process has been excruciating. You have been forced to walk by faith. You have been provided for daily. You would rather have your provision a month, two months, six months down the line. No, no, no. You've had just enough for each day. And y'all, I know it has been hard. I know it's been excruciating. I know it has maybe in many ways beat you down and worn you out. But don't let the difficulty of the season you've been in or the discomfort of your situation make you doubt God. God will give you back what he has asked you to give up in that season of testing. God is just doing some retraining right now. He is retraining us before he gives us back what we've given up. God has been doing some retraining. He has been removing idols. He's been turning over tables and he's been cleaning house. Then, when we get into our next season, whether we have feast or famine, we know who our provider is. We know who our comforter is. We know where our security comes from, and it's not from our savings account. I can tell you all, I am on the other side of the wilderness, and I am already living in the favor and blessing of God that I believed was coming this year, and I'm already seeing the fruit of it. And what's so wild about this change in season, even just in a couple months, is I genuinely look at my comforts differently now. I really do. I'm not just saying that. I'm not saying it because I'm supposed to or because it's the good Christian thing to do. I'm telling you, I look at my bank account differently. I look at my calendar differently. I look at my clients and my plans and my products and my business differently. 
I look at it to see how I'm doing and to keep my finger on the pulse of my growth and my goals and so on, but I don't worship it. I don't depend on it. The only one I depend on is God. And if God takes away all of my bank accounts and all of my business and all of my plans, I'm still going to be okay. Because for two years, I walked by faith with him. For two years, he provided for me daily with manna. I feel like the verse from Paul hits in a whole new way after this wilderness season where he writes, I know what it's like to be content in all circumstances, whether in plenty or in want. I had a lot of comforts for a lot of years. And when that was taken away for two years and God showed me that he truly is my provider, he is there with me in the wilderness. Now on the other side, now thankfully being out of the wilderness, I know he is my provider. I'm not confused about who takes care of me. I'm not confused about who guides me and leads me and and shows me the next step or the next 10 steps. It doesn't matter because either way, he is the one that provides. I don't know where you are as you're listening to this right now. I don't know if you're in a manna season and you are having to depend on God every single day for what you need, or if you are in a harvest season and there is just fruit and favor and blessing everywhere you turn, or maybe you're somewhere in between. I just wanna encourage you. Regardless of your bank account, your season, or your situation, God is your provider. He is your comforter, and He is your security, nothing else. And y'all, since all of the things that we depend on can be taken away, the fact that God is our provider, God is our comfort, and God is our security, that is some good news. That's some news that we can build our life on, y'all. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with me for Get Your Hopes Up. I love hanging out with you every Monday to help you get to know God, get closer to Him, and get your hopes up again. Be sure to follow the Christy Wright channel so you never miss a new show. And then I'll see you next Monday for another new episode of Get Your Hopes Up.